lighthouse. That thing ain't working or nothing, is it? Now look for the lighthouse. Look for the light to shine and everything goes well. I, uh, I have learned this week, in the last two or three weeks, to trust God. Trust means humble yourself to realize you can't do it. God has to do it. Uh, Tuesday morning, Rob didn't come. Rob didn't eat all day Tuesday. I went down and he said, I just need some water. So I got him some water. Usually I can see when things are going on that he's not right. But I didn't see anything that day. Wednesday, I went and picked up Kenzie and said, I'm taking going home to see how Rob is. And got home and I knew then that it was time to go. They had a struggle getting him out of the basement, as big as he is. Uh, we had to close one basement door because of the ramp for Judy. So one thing led to another. But anyway, I said, God, I don't know if I can handle all this. Have you ever been there? I said, I don't know. God, this is just more than I, I want to think about. As I was driving to Boone Hospital, God said, you're mine. I'll take care of it. So I had to learn in my own heart and mind to trust him. There are times when I get alone and driving, I'll cry. That was one of the moments. That was one of the days. And I thought back at the book of Revelation that says there will be no more tears in heaven. Crying is okay. It cleanses you. makes you feel better. But I have learned to trust God. And trusting God is more important to me than I can, I can tell you right now. I have had to trust God through everything that Judy has been through. And Wednesday, not only did they take Rob to the hospital, but I was having chest pain. Not really chest pain, but like somebody was shooting me in the chest. And I said, God, I can't handle this. He said to me in my head, in my mind, he said, I'll take care of it. I haven't had one since. I have been able to relax in God. I, I get tired. I'm going to tell you, I get tired. Driving back and forth to Columbia, doing Things when I get home and before I leave, I have to do things that get things ready for Judy so she can get, take care of herself when I'm gone. And I get tired. I'm going to admit, I was tired yesterday. I laid down last night to go to bed. You ever been so tired you can't go to sleep? That's kind of the way I was last night, so I took a couple of Tylenol, took a couple of drinks of whiskey. No, I didn't. <laughs> I don't have any whiskey, but I just laid there and got pretty soon I was pushing. And I didn't wake up until this morning. And I just I'm telling you this because there's three three statements that I want us to think about today. We're going to be looking at Romans chapter 8, verse 27 through 30. Very familiar passage of scripture in, in between. And it's talking about trusting God. And there's three statements, four statements I want us to look at today. I'm here by God's appointment. God is keeping me in his love. I am in the training. God is training me. At last, he will 
take care of it all. But in Romans chapter 8, starting with verse 27, if you want to stand and read with me, you can. If you don't, you don't have to. He who searches the hearts knows what the mind of the Spirit is because he intercedes for the saints according to the will of God. And we know that God causes all things to work together for good to those who love God, to those who are called according to his purpose. For those whom he foreknew, he also predestined to become conformed to the image of his Son, so that he would be the firstborn among many brethren. And these whom he predestined, he also called, and these whom he called, he also justified. And these whom he justified, he also glorified. Thank you, Heavenly Father, for being there for me, for answering these questions for me. Thank you for being with us today. Help us to learn what you have for us to learn. We love you more than, I love you more than I can ever express. You've done so many blessed things for me in my life, and I just thank you for it. I thank you for the opportunity I have to preach. But Lord, I need the Holy Spirit just to intervene in my life. You would speak through me, through him. And my words will be your work. My thoughts will be your thoughts. I give it all to you. And I trust you to take care of it. In Jesus' name. First thing is I am here by God's appointment. God predestined me to be here. I'm not talking about being a preacher. I'm talking about being here. Have you ever been that way? God appointed you to be where you're at. No matter where you are, God appointed you to be there. It may be a workplace, it may be school, it may be whatever, God appointed you to be there. And God appointed me to be where I am in my, in my family, in my life, and, and all the things that are there, he knows. The Holy Spirit knows. And he understands and he intercedes on my behalf. I know that Jesus intercedes on my behalf every day, every minute, every hour, sitting at the right hand of God the Father. But also the Holy Spirit intercedes. Folks, sometimes we leave the Holy Spirit out of our life. And it's because of him we are able to sustain this life that we have. We are predestined and brought to this place for whatever reason God has. God knows what we're here for, what we're supposed to be doing, and where we need to be going, and what we need to do. He understands our situation better than we do. I don't understand. Sometimes, sometimes my trust level is kind of low, and I say, why me, Lord? Why do bad things happen to good people? Have you ever heard that? Well, folks, I want to tell you something. Bad things happen to everybody. Good things happen to everybody. We just have to remember that God is a blessing and he blesses us more than we could ever understand. We don't always understand what he's doing in our life, do we? I don't. I don't always understand what he's doing in my life, but I know he's back in the back somewhere doing something good for me. Because he wants the best for me. <clears throat> Not because of who I am, but because of who he is. I am his child. How many of you want the best for your child? And you always have throughout your life, you want the best for them. No matter how old they are, or how young they are, you want the best for them. Well, God wants the best for us. And he will do what he needs to do to get it right. He brings us to this point in our life to say, I trust you, God. 
I know that you're going to take care of it. I don't know how, I don't know when, but you will, and it'll be in his right time. Just as it says in Galatians 4, 4, Jesus was sent at the right time. But folks, I want to tell you, there's a time when Jesus was sent in my life just at the right time. We all have had children who have been sick, haven't we? I looked at Rob the other night, Wednesday, thinking I wish it was me. But it wasn't. He was kind of out of it. He was out of it. Not kind of. He was out of it. And I said, Lord, we've been here before. You brought us through it before. You'll take us through it now. I leave him in your hands. I leave our family in your hands. Do what you have to do. Next day when I got in there, he was alert, talking a little bit, fighting with that nose. <laughs> That's everybody does when they have to have that thing in their nose. He said, you're out, you need to leave that on. Oh, no, no Dad, just, just when I'm sleeping. I said, oh, yeah, okay. Folks, I don't know about you, but sometimes it's hard to let go. But when you let go, God takes care of you. Like the guy hanging on a rope. Three times God sent a letter to him said, through different ways, let go of the rope. Hanging over a cliff. Finally let go of the rope, and it was two feet above the ground. <laughs> Sometimes we have to learn to let go, and we'll land on God's plane. God will take care of it. I am in His keeping. This song has been running through my mind. And a TV, because there's nothing in my mind except what God puts in. God will take care of you. God will take care of you through every day, over all the way. He will take care of you. God will take care of you. Be not dismayed, whatever be tied. God will take care of you. Beneath his wings of love abide. God will take care of you. God will take care of you. He's seen it. You're in his keeping. I am in his keeping. He knows what's going on. He knows better than we do. He understands what's happening. Just like right now, I don't know why Rob has to stay in the hospital another day. But the doctors say there's some enzymes that he can't get leveled out that needs to be leveled out. I don't understand it. You know what? God does. He's a great physician. And he'll take care of it. I don't know everything. Do you? I do know this one thing. The Lord is my shepherd. I shall not want. And in 2 Corinthians chapter 12 verse 9 says that my grace is sufficient. I will meet all of your needs for his grace. God's going to take care of me. He's keeping me in his grace. His grace is sufficient. And he shall supply all of my needs according to the riches and glory through Jesus Christ. Philippians 4, 19. I need to accept him taking care of me. I need to be taken care of. Not by anybody but God. Because I know when he's taking care of me, everything's going to be good. He will keep me in his loving arms and his hands. He's the one who cares. He will take my hand and lead me through. 
He's brought me this far. He won't hunt me down. He'll take me all the way, all the way home. He makes all things work together for good. For those who love God. And folks, that's, that's important for us to look at. It's for those who love God. It's not for everybody. Not everything works out, but I know that everything works out for me because I love God. He said it. I have been called to his purpose. God will take care of me. I'm still under construction. He's going to take care of me. He will be there for me. He knows what I need more than I do. He meets every need that I have. <coughs> Not everything I want, but every need that I have, God takes care of. And every blessing is from Him. Coming down from the sky. From the Father of lights coming down. I have blessings. The other morning I was doing my devotion. And that came to me. How blessed I am. How blessed I am to have my family that I have. Oh, they have difficulty. But they're my family. I told Rob, I said, you know we were planning to go up to our family reunion Saturday there's only three of us left. The family wants to get together. My sister's 80-something. My brother's 80-something. Sometimes you never know when things are going to happen. We've lost family this past year. We never thought it was going to happen. How many of you know that? How many of you know that tomorrow you don't know what's going to happen? You just believe today and live today as if there is a tomorrow. As I put it in Facebook one day, is that make plans for tomorrow, but live today is the only day you have. Because it is. Not only am I here because God appointed me here, not only is He keeping me, but He's training me. Like I said, I'm under construction. You know what construction is. You got to put a piece here, a piece there, a piece there. I'm under construction. 74 years old, still being constructed. And instructed. Hopefully, I'm trained. I'm getting more and more training to be more conformed to his image. Training how to be like Jesus. More loving, more caring, more compassionate. Learning how to live by the fruit of the Spirit. More gentleness, more faithfulness, more love, more joy, more gentleness, more kindness, more self-control. Not self-control of me, but self-control by the Spirit. Being trained Trusting Him and obeying Him. Reading His Word. Understanding what His Word is saying to me. Not only reading His Word, but understanding it. Meditating on it. Looking at it and seeing what it has to say to me. There's been, this week in my devotions, there's been things that have been said to me that I thought, wow, I needed that today. Have you ever been there? Read your devotions and said, wow. With God's word, wow, I needed that. There's my answer right there. Where's my hope? Being trained to be like Christ in his sufferings. Sometimes we have to suffer to be more like Christ. You ever think about that? Who suffered more than Jesus Christ? For you and me? Nobody. Sometimes we have to suffer to get through it. Talking to my brother last night, he wanted to know how Rob was. I think we weren't at the picnic. And you know he had knee surgery. He's already walking. He said the only thing.
think that bothers him now is walking in the grass. So he says, I can't mow the grass. <laughs> he said, that break my mower. <laughs> and he said, besides that, my mower broke down. I'll have my son come over and do it. <laughs> Folks, I'm telling you, God is, is working in our life. Sometimes we have to suffer things. One day when I was laying in, in the hospital with leukemia, I got a little bit low. I didn't read my devotion that morning. I didn't pray right that morning. And I thought things were collapsing on me. And an unbelieving doctor came in and said, what's wrong with you this morning? You're not yourself. You didn't read your Bible, did you? I said, no, I didn't. He said, did you pray? I said, no, I didn't. He said, you ought to do that. An unbelieving doctor. My infection disease doctor came in. <laughs> That's who he was. I was being infected by a disease called Satan. And he lifted me up. Folks, sometimes we, we have to have outside influences to lift us up and tell us what we need to do. I do. I need that sometimes. to his image, be more like him. That's why he's doing this thing. Being trained through his word and through prayer and led by the spirit helps me to understand better who he is and what I need to be for him and how I can be like him. One day we will be like him, right? It will be in heaven when we meet him face to face. We will be like him. But right now we're conforming to that point in our life. No matter where, where he has us, what he's doing for us, we need to be conforming to his image. Be more like him. We were created in God's image, right? Now we need to be more like Jesus in our life. Because we are born again believers in Jesus Christ. We love him and he loves us. We need to be more loving like him. Looking at people different. Seeing how things work. Being trained to lean on and lean. That's another song. Rob? Yep. That I sang with Gabriel. I had to get a light. <laughs> Radio on it. And I sing on the way up here when nobody else is in the car. And that was one of them. Learning to lean on Jesus. I can't lean on anybody else. Jesus Christ, 
and I am going to be like him when I get to heaven. But I'm working on it now, preparing for that day. What a day that will be when Jesus I will see. I'm standing on the solid rock right now, waiting to be there. He will, the last thing, he will show me his purpose in due time. Right? He will show. Well, I have been pastor for over 30 years. Yeah, almost 40. Almost. Next year, 40 years. And God had a plan for me and his purpose for me was get through all the stuff and be his servant wherever he was. I've been in Eolia, Cuba, and Perry. And Perry could be my last one until I get home. Well, maybe you all might decide that I need to leave now and I have to come for another one. But God had a purpose. And he's shown me that purpose is to preach his word, to do his will, and to perform in the way he wants me to perform. He will help me to grow stronger, help me in my training to trust him. And his purpose is to be a better witness for him, a better servant, a better person. He's always there. His grace is always with me. And his purpose is always there. I just have to see, as Henry Blackby said, I have to see where God's going and go with him. <clears throat> Don't get ahead of him. Don't stand beside him. See where he's going. Let him take you by the hand. And lead him through. He will show me the things that to happen where and I can get there when I get there. He will help me to keep my eyes focused on Jesus. One of my favorite passages of scripture is Matthew 6 33. Seek ye first the kingdom of God and his righteousness, and all these other things shall be added unto you. I need to just keep my eyes on him. Keep seeking Jesus. Keep doing what he wants me to do. Keep being what I need to be for him. And be where he wants me to be. And he will keep me. And he will train me. And he will help me to go. That's for all of us. Keep your eyes on Jesus. He's our greatest goal, right? Paul said, I haven't attained that yet. But I'm still striving to be. He's always there, always loving, always caring, always lifting, always encouraging. Trusting God is not the, not the only thing. Believing that Jesus Christ is your Savior is the greatest thing. I was born again when I was nine years old. Told my daughter, my my niece, that she and she, her dad and I were baptized together. She didn't know that. She's not as old. She's not as old. But we were baptized together. I still remember that. Being baptized with Jesus. God just wants people to come to know Jesus Christ as their personal.
think about these four statements this week. You are where you are by God's appointment. You are in his key. You are under his training. As we go from here today, may God bless us all. And may we all be able to say, I have Jesus as my Savior. If not, trust me today, be your Savior. Let's pray. Father, I thank you. I thank you for bringing us together today to worship you. And thank you for the blessings give us every day. I pray that you would just help us to join together every time we get a chance to worship you. And we will give you the praise in Jesus' name. Let's stand and sing our hymn in one, one verse. Well, we try this first verse of number nine again. Give me the words to let Paul go. Father, we love you, worship and adore you, glorify thy name in all the earth, glorify thy name, glorify thy name, glorify thy name in all the earth. I'm going to do something a little different today. Kevin and Debbie to stand out here in the center, and we're going to pray for them. So they'll have a safe journey to Florida and have a blessed time while there. Kevin will be preaching at the trailer park. Yeah. So come on, let's gather around and pray for them. And they travel. they got a long ways to go. There's a lot of dangers on the road. We just pray that you put your angels in a camp about them, what you had. And we thank you for them, for blessing us when they've been here. We're family, because this is our church family. We're brothers and sisters in Christ. We want to be sure to always give you the praise and the glory, but we know you're the one worthy. Amen. 